Welcome to episode 6 of Gun Guides, where I show you how to get, use, and master every gun family in Spiral Knights. In this episode, we'll be taking a look at the Pulsar family of guns. These guns are bought from Brinks for 15 Bark Modules. If you don't know what Bark Modules are, they are the tokens you get for beating the Romulus Twins in the mission Built to Destroy. The 5 star options include 2 Elemental Guns, the Polaris and Wildfire, the Shadow Damage Permafroster, and the Normal Damage Supernova. Pulsars can shoot three times before reloading. Once fired, the Pulsar pellet will travel for four and a half blocks, but after that it'll become a much larger explosive bullet that will travel for an extra four and a half blocks. The larger bullet gains a massive area of effect, extra damage, and knockback. The charge attack fires a large expanded shot from the start. Pulsars within the gunning community are generally regarded as the hardest gun to master. To break this gun down heavily, I'm going to have to go into pretty deep detail on everything that makes a Pulsar a Pulsar. Doing well with Pulsars can be boiled down into a multitude of different topics. Doing damage is great, but isn't really the selling point of the Pulsars. The small shots deal fairly insignificant damage, but the expanded shots deal the same amount as a blaster shot. We'll be comparing Pulsars to blasters a ton by the way, because of this equality in damage. In what ways can Pulsars outdo blasters with these identical damage numbers? In what cases is using a Pulsar better than using a blaster? Well, to deal good damage we can use walls. If an enemy is against a wall, a Pulsar can have their knockback mitigated and end up doing very good damage. Pushing a single enemy into a wall in order to get this bonus damage isn't really worth it though, because straight up killing it with a blaster is a better, faster, and easier option. However, for example, in cramped fights with groups of enemies, it's useful to shove them into a corner with the Pulsar knockback. How about burst damage? Funnily enough, Pulsars are great for this. Due to the slow bullet speed, stacking multiple bullets together is a great source of burst damage and flinching. If you walk forwards while you shoot, you create a sort of barrage that crashes into enemies for a large amount of burst. Using Polarist or Permafroster are great ways to increase the damage from this barrage. Both Shock and Freeze can hold an enemy still, essentially creating a wall on the spot, causing the rest of the barrage to crash onto them, dealing great damage. This is potentially the best way a Pulsar can do damage. If you know where a specific enemy will spawn, you can use this barrage to insta-kill them as well. What kind of groups of enemies do you want to use Pulsars against anyways? Well, for a gunner, large groups of enemies are best dealt with by mobile burst guns, such as auto guns or magnuses. Mobile guns such as Blasters and Antiguas are better for smaller groups of enemies. Pulsars are bad against small groups of enemies because of unneeded knockback. The large AoE of Pulsars make them the only mobile gun that can take on large groups of enemies, but also the only mobile gun to be bad against small groups. This means that you generally don't want to use Pulsar against the small groups that Blaster can handle easier, but you do want to use it against the larger groups that Blaster could have some trouble dealing with. But in the end, are Pulsars really there to outdamage Blasters? Well, probably not. Pulsars require the stars to align to outdamage Blasters. Pulsars' slow bullets compared to the fast ones of the Blaster means that you have to rely on enemies moving into good situations for you. Pulsar bullets are too slow for you to position enemies well most of the time. Knockback, flinching, and enemy manipulation and control are the fortes of the Pulsar. To recap everything I've said so far, let's see how I implemented some of these ideas in my gameplay. This example is probably the easiest. I stagger the turret with my pulsar shot so it can't attack my teammates. Using my dash here, I am able to easily reposition myself from the griever to put it back at a safe distance where my pulsar shots can keep it at a safe range. In this cramped space, moving all the enemies against the wall is pretty easy, and shows why pulsars are pretty good at crowd control. I also remember to keep my distance and the right length as the enemies get pushed back further and further so my explosions always land. Moving forward here, as I shoot, I'm able to burst this zombie down with a barrage. A couple seconds later, I'm able to flinch a turret and move two zombies against a wall. As you can see, my teammate here isn't very happy with my pulsar spamming. After shooting this zombie against a wall, I use my shield bump to reposition the second zombie to an optimal range as well. We can see here that using shield bumps can be great for enemies that are too close. In this arena, I use my Polaris to shove these slimes against the wall. 
but I walked too close and realized that Polaris is no longer a good option, so I switched to a different weapon, in this case the Mixmaster. Once I see I can, I dash away and use my Polaris again because I'm now at the right range for it. The important part to take away here is that I don't spam Polaris, but I use it when I'm at the right range for it. Here's a great example of how Pulsar Knockback can help reposition enemies inside of a cramped fight. Here I'm able to use my Pulsar to knock back up to 5 enemies into the corner of the fight, pretty much clearing the wave instantly. This is a case where the Pulsar is better than the Blaster because of how many enemies I'm hitting at the same time. Just like Alchemers, flashing the basic attack creates a projectile with seemingly infinite range that instantly detonates explosives of any type. Pulsars are spammed way too much and have a bad reputation among the community. And for a good reason. A niche gun that should rarely see use in a party is being spammed as a main damage source. If you're planning on using the Pulsar, just remember to not spam and think about whether a blaster can be dealing damage in a more efficient and less obnoxious way. I might make more videos on pulsars in the future because of how many possible ways there are to use them, but this will serve as my basic guide for pulsars for now. Is there a gun line you'd like to see me cover, or do you have a suggestion for other content? I'd love to hear it.